So we're gonna be watching the 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 spooks and jukes rant that went around and caused a lot a, a lot of uh a lot of a lot of discussion and uh stress in the DVD community. A lot of people had a lot of takeaways from this. Some very very negative. Some very very positive. Some came from his you know his particular reactions that he had. Uh, two people having native reactions to his video on Twitter. Um, so, um, yeah, a lot of negativity went down, um, in the community because of this video. A lot of people asked me specifically if I was reacting to this, if I was going to react to this. Um, so yeah, we are, uh, it was thrown in the, the suggestions. So it is Tuesday. Here we are. Um, as always, I don't think I need to this time, but you know, I just put the link in the in the description uh, down below. The link is in the Twitch on the side that I just posted. Um, you probably know who Spooks and Jukes is. Very, very popular DVD content creator, mostly uh, uh, popularized um, the uh, the uh, you know outing bad TTVs, people who usually are doing bad behavior. Um, of course, you guys know how I feel about uh, content, assault content. Uh, Spooks and Jukes in general, kind of like. Um, airs more on the side of only going after uh, TTVs that do something morally incorrect and not just kind of like what most uh, TT like salty TTV channels do where they only go after people that like you know um, are salty or whiny for any reason which is not I, it might be not a big enough reason to make a video about someone um, because it's just mostly focused on actual like bullying and like mal behavior um, but um there there is a little bit of uh, salt content in his content as well so um there there's that aspect of it as well that it's not completely focused on just like anti-bullying there's certain aspects of his content that are based on you know salt in general so um yeah so you guys know how i feel about salt content in general i i think i think that just based on it, personal interactions that i've had with spooks and jukes they've rated us once before uh any interactions i've had with them like on twitter in the dvd community space they've always been kind to me um so they, they at least on the surface appear to be a, a kind individual um yeah that's kind of just explaining my background my feelings about things laying my biases out on the table if i have any uh before we get into the video just tldr he's always been nice to me uh his content uh, it's not a content style I enjoy uh, for a multitude of reasons, but yeah. So. I really hate to say it, but I think we all know it's true at this point. Dead by Daylight is not in a good place, and I think it comes down to three reasons. Okay, so so, talk about it. so DBD, so like with any Reason game, number one, DBD like with any game is going to have like ebbs and flows. It goes up and it goes down, just like a lot of games. I think generally the game is on a downward slope because of skill base. Ever since skill based matchmaking, the, the game has so Resident Evil One Chapter One happened and the game got a massive spike to I think I think it was on Steam they had like 100k plus players and they basically retained none of those. Another player count is like lower than like like right before that chapter hit. So like they didn't retain those players is what that says. Like a lot of people came into the game but a lot of people left. Um, and that player count on a general trend, at least on Steam charts, continues to go down. Um, but like any game, there's going to be ebbs and flows. There's going to be chapters that suck. There's going to be chapters that are great. I think we've had a back-to-back -back bad chapter. I think Night is boring. Vittorio is boring. Um, Skull Merchant is, you know, despite I think she's a fine character, her ability to, to you know, do the I'm going to lock down a 3-gen crap super boring and, and annoying so she's now kind of a dud character and we talked about way before she even came out that like she's kind of like basically just the predator ripoff anyway um basically the only the good thing to come out of the game in like the past six months is talita and, and nato um who are like you know pretty good survivors pretty cool survivors no good perks really came out of them though <laughs> there's like one gen perk that one of them has that's kind of okay um we have to run around in pairs of two which is kind of inefficient um yeah, we've been in a six months drought, essentially, like where things have kind of been kind of meh for the most part for, for long periods of time. Um, so I think we're kind of getting a little, little stir crazy a little bit. Um, so I think that's a big I think we've been on a on a downward trend for like a long time. So I think that's why we're kind of like, Ugh. that's just my take. One is hackers. 
because although Behavior has been banning tens of thousands of hackers, and they've also made it to where hackers can no longer hold people hostage in games anymore, which was a... I, I say this every single time this gets brought up. You are not facing hackers as much as you think you are. I'm not saying this is like an, op an opposition to what he's saying, but I'm saying like, just because every time hackers bring get brought up, there's always people over in the Twitch, like over here on the, the right side, and the people down in the comments below on YouTube, they're like, I faced a hacker yesterday, and it's like... Uh, and then I, I'll like elaborate, I'll ask them to elaborate, like, okay, well, how did they hack? And they're like... They were slightly faster than me, and then they were, you know, they got, you know, they were looping in officially. They weren't hugging tiles like they were supposed to. They were taking bad routes that was making them lose distance. Or, like, you know, they were playing a character like Huntress that raiding your hatchet, like, slows you a bit. So they're like, why are they so much faster than me? And it's like, they they don't get it, right? Usually, you're not facing hackers as much as you think you are. Um, I, the last time I ran, I ran into a hacker last month, right? We caught somebody hacking, right, last month? I forget what they did, but they did somebody something pretty blatant. But that was last month. was the last time we caught, like, a hard hacker. Um, like, in terms of, like, the actual, like, not not things that su that are subtle, that look sus, but, like, actually confirmed catching a hacker, that was, like, a month ago, and then before that, it was, like, three months, right? Like, there, there are long spans of time in between us actually running into, like, an actual, like, hacker. That Kate, yeah, that's 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 who I'm referring to, right? That was last month, right? That wasn't the beginning of this month. That was like late February. That was this month. Was it the beginning? Because I I could have swore that was like you know February, like the last week of February. I thought that was last month. Because we there have been a lot of streams since then. Yeah. Okay. Well, we caught one this month, but before that's the one I was counting for February. That's the one I was counting for February. So. There had there wasn't one before that for like months. So like, yeah, I was just misremembering when that was placed. But yeah, like I haven't actually run into a lot of hard hackers. So like, I feel that like people definitely over exaggerate how much they're running into hackers just because they they, quite frankly, they just lose. <laughs> they're just losing and they want something to blame it on. So that's just food for thought. Something to keep in the back of your mind when we're having this hacker conversation is you're probably not running into as many as you think you are. Huge uh, problem a few months back. They are still able to easily go in and get people's IP addresses yep. and DDoS them or tank their internet, essentially. Which this is, is illegal, by the way. Highly illegal. What you are you are threatening yourself with like legal trouble because somebody made you mad in DPD? <laughs> or you just want to troll a streamer in DBD? You're committing a crime. Like <laughs> So wild. Primarily been happening to streamers, obviously, because the hackers want attention, but it can happen to anybody. From the looks of the it, they can just look at a lot there of you with go. your username and just figure out where you are and completely Even better. shut your internet off. Dead by Daylight is clearly not a safe place to be, especially if you stream the game. Hackers have also been targeting people in other ways. Myself, I've had the same hacker stalking me for a year, and what they do is they wait till I go live, then they log on to a PC account with a prestige 100 bubba, and they start hacking, flying around, instantly killing people, and then- Oh, the hey, that was Anguish! Wait, 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 Anguish is in that game! Hello! Yo, Anguish Knight! We know Anguish! Anguish comes in here sometimes! Hi! You got a cameo! Look, there you are, bud! People, and then in the end game chat, they tell people to- ...and say that they like- ...among Ugh, other things. God. So then, people will come to my chat, and uh, say, you know, I'm reporting you, you're a cheater. They do it so people will come and accuse me of cheating and yep. that it causes a big ruckus during yep. my stream. So people will accuse me of not only cheating, but saying really terrible things to people. Obviously there's not much I can do about this. I just have to say, hey, I play on PlayStation and yeah, that wasn't me. You can look at the VOD and yeah, that, that's about all I can do. The second reason Dead by Daylight is in a really bad place right now is because the new content they've been releasing is complete and utter is what I brought First, up. There yep. was the knight who was this super cool, bad medieval knight who zones people. Like, yeah, it's now. just like, were you making, like, I, I brought this up when I brought up my tier list, right? I brought this up when I brought up my tier list. Hold on, let me let me go fetch that real quick. And it's not solid. I'm still working on it. Um, we can switch the stuff around. Basically, the point being is when I made this tier list, Sadako, Skull Merchant, and Knight are characters that function this nice little zone and it's not really nice that's not a good adjective for it but they function this little zone where it's like they are terrible unless they're playing in a very very obnoxious specific play style these three 
they're bad unless they play in a very obnoxious specific play style. And then they're just like unbearable. Which for Knight and Skull Merchant, that's the three gen strat, and for Sadako, it's the condemned strat. Like their base kits are incredibly weak. But once they start three jetting or doing the condemned strat, they're just some of the most annoying characters to face in the video game. They become Forever Freddy from like 2020. That was a great e example somebody made uh, recently. Um, uh, no, recently it was like today. <laughs> yeah, words. Um, somebody made that comparison today. Is that like these these characters are kind of reminiscent of Forever Freddy from back in the day, where they can just like hold. Ma if you're, if I'm not gonna win, I'll just hold the match hostage for like 30 minutes until I do. And DVD matches on average, when I go in, I clip for the B-roll that I put on the on the um, on the commentary videos. When I clip the B-roll, most matches are like nine to twelve minutes, to the point where if I have a commentary video that exceeds like twelve minutes, I'm usually having to use extra clips and put in like part of an and the next match in, or completely like you know, I'll be like, okay, well this video I'm talking about night, and then I'll have a hard time like finding finding like a night video because like I don't do the three gen strat. That's like 12 minutes long. If my video is like over 12 minutes, I'm like, okay, I, not that one, not that one. I go searching through my streams for like forever to find a, a video that's lo like a match of DVD that's longer than 12 minutes because most don't exceed 12 minutes. Most are between 8 to 12 minutes. When you have a match that lasts 30 minutes, 30 minutes, it is brutal and boring. Not the perk, not the perk brutal. <laughs> it's brutal and boring, and nobody wants to play that. Nobody wants to be in a 30-minute match. Nobody does. There was, um, I forget who said it. Somebody came in today. It was like, I'm trying to, I think it was Mr. Mumu came in today and said, I was trying to play score today, but people are like preemptively DCing at five gens. I don't know what's happening. And it's nobody. Everybody's scared. <laughs> like everybody's afraid that they're going to end up in a match with score It's going to be a 30 minute match. And that's just like, nobody wants to be in a DVD match. That's three times the length of an average match. That hip, yeah, that match on the game where she sent us there to the meatpacking plant, that match was 32 minutes long. 32 minutes long. Nobody wants to be in a match that's three times the length of a normal DVD match. Nobody does. That's not BP efficient, and it's not efficient in terms of having fun. It's just not. There's not enough going on in DVD to make a match exciting for 30 minutes. There's just, it's just not. So you run into these three bozos who, like, they suck unless they run this really obnoxious strat. I, I, I'm either going to hold the mass hostage for 30 minutes or I'm going to lose. They, nobody wants to play that. Nobody wants to log on to Survivor. Like Mr. Boo Boo was running into, it's like, why are people seeing my matches? It's like, they don't want to deal with that. Nobody wants to be in a match for 30 minutes. It's stupid. It's just dumb. Down guards and just, just makes them run away. Makes them run forward. That's what that's what the knight does. Not to mention the map that he came with is also. I don't even remember what the name of the. Oh, map Borgo, is. yeah. Just forget. Why, when the main info color in the game is red, is the rest of the map freaking red? Why scratch marks, auras, all of these things are red? Why are why is the main color scheme so saturated and red on that map so you can't see anything? It's just like, how, how do they play test that and go, man, that's kind of hard to see. And by the way, the current version of it that you're playing is not the version that released. It was worse. It was worse before they adjusted it. They've adjusted it once. It used to be even more f***ing red. <laughs> it's now. It used to be even worse. And you still can't see the scratch marks sometimes. I lose people all the time on that map. So just dumb. Like I, like I, like I don't like real. Like I know it seems weird because I'm always like you know try. I, most of my criticism I try to make constructive, so it's like something that like if somebody sees it, that that possibly works a behavior, they can be like, oh okay, well you know maybe we missed a, a few things here or there, or maybe we could adjust this. I don't like just saying something's just stupid or dumb because I don't feel like it's constructive. But this is just fucking dumb. You're telling me you play tested that map and nobody fucking realized that. It's kind of hard to see the red things on this map. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see the scratch marks and the auras on this map. It, maybe we should make the map a different color scheme. No, and you, the, the, nobody, you, you didn't catch that. And you thought that was okay. You clipped it, you shipped it. You're like, that's fine. That's stupid. How did you not understand that? That's actually, actually dumb. Actually dumb. I actually forget that the map even exists until I randomly... Uh, get the map 
uh, in rotation. And it was pawned for almost the entire first, like, month that it was out. Because it was, you know, it had it, it, it was bugged to where it spawned every single possible pallet across the map. It was spawning every single pallet across the map. Usually, sometimes pallets will spawn, sometimes they won't in certain areas. It was just spawning every possible pallet for like a month. So dumb. Yo, Thick Boy, thank you so much for the follow. I very much appreciate that, friend. Hopefully you're doing well on this Tuesday. Nobody uses the map offering, at least not that I see. I'll randomly appear on that map and I'll go, oh, wow, I forgot that this garbage exists. He does have a decent Mori, though, so I'll give him it's that. It's very good. Very and then good, we yeah. have the Skull Merchant. Most of you know how I feel about the Skull Merchant. It's the same way most people feel about the Skull Merchant. We, we all thought we were going to get this really awesome, badass cyborg killer. And what did we get? Another f zoning killer. Another killer that places something down that has a big radius and a big zone that you just have to run out of and just, again... I think that wouldn't be a problem if it didn't go through floors. Because that makes, like, RPD in, in Midwich and the game just, like, unbearable to play on against them. Because you'll be minding your own business on a gen, theoretically, like, super far away from them, right? Because the stairwell is over there on the other side of the map or something they would have to theoretically travel a long way to pressure you to do. But suddenly, you know, suddenly you're just getting exposed through the floor and you can't even do your gen. Like, what are you, nurse? <laughs> like, nurse is usually the one that ha that can just, like, you know, appear through the floor and hit you, right? Now you're doing nurse things. It's just, just like, what? Hold forward. Hold forward or you die. And guess what? When it gets to three gens left, you just place down your drones on the gens. Mm -hmm. And just with night, when there's uh, three gens, you just can place your knights to guard the gens it's they're realistically the same character like the info is cool and i appreciate it but realistically if we're being honest they're the same character they dbd released the same character twice like realistically they released the same character twice skull merchant is just a slightly not as efficient version of knight 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 has the better ability to keep people off gens because of his his, his guards, because they actually like do damage, <laughs> and, and and you have to run from them, so you actually have to vacate the premises. Um, you can't just like take down the the drone and do it. She still has to come physically there herself and stop it. But the realistically, they're the same character, right? They released okay, they released the three gen guy, and then they released a uh, diet three gen woman. <laughs> you know, it's like they're 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 realistically the same character. So fun. It's such a good time. One redeeming factor about these two chapters is the survivors. I yep. think that Vittorio is really cool. I also I, I think disagree. that Talitha and Hinatu are also really cool. They're very good. So the survivors are cool. I like them. But the killers, complete. I think it's also the fact that it was back to back. I mean, yep. people wait three months for new content in this game. So you just, you wait three months and you get the night and you're like, uh, and then you wait three more months and you're like, all right. And then you get the skull merchant. And, and it's the like, same character, right? Now let's, let's take a look here, right? Let's take a look at, at our DVD. Usually they follow this trend. It's not unheard of that they do this, right? Because certain killers are just a, a step up of someone else, right? They kind of like perfect powers doing it this way, right? So, like, obviously, Knight was a prelude to Skull Merger, right? Um, in a sense, Sadako was a prelude to Dredge. Because Sadako, Sadako is all about, um, like, teleporting to a very, very specific spot and has subtle stealth and is an M1 killer at the end of the day. Um, Dredge is the same way, right? Except he's better, right? Because he has, he can teleport to a specific spot, but they're lockers, so they're a little bit more convenient, depending on the map. Um... He has stealth, but it's not just like, you know, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, he doesn't still have a lullaby when he's stealth. He has a nightfall, which is way better. Um, like he's just better Sadako, right? He's just better version of Sadako. Um, so it's not unheard of for, for DBD, um, to do this where they, you know, make a prelude, uh, like a prelude character and then like finalize the formula later. But I feel like feel like with these two there's so much overlap that they're almost the same character there's not enough different about them that i really like consider them to be like that much different so like 
literally the difference is do i want to actually be able to physically push people off the gens or do i want the info to go push them off myself that's literally the only difference between these two characters one character just has the ability to push people off gens when he wants the other one has the info to do it it has to do it themselves the, 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 otherwise they're the same they they fill the exact same role the exact same role there's not enough differentiation between them so to get nearly the same character six months in a row is just like, or like three months and then three months and it's just the same guy is like, uh, you think the recent overlap is caused by a lack of genuine inspiration? I, I don't know what's happening on their end of things. I never know what licenses they may have had that fall, that fell through, um, or licenses they're saving for like a, a different event. But like these two, these two original chapters suck. And like, like we've talked about before. Um, original chapters don't have to be bad. Like, original chapters can slap. Um, like, uh, um, I have to go a little bit farther back. Oni was a, was a great original character. Awesome, great original character. I, Tertiary Deathslinger, he was kind of a problem when he first came out, but he's, like, relatively balanced now, which is really nice. He's just good, but not oppressive. So he's actually, I actually like Deathslinger a lot. His lore is cool. Think about somebody else. Um... Twins, their lore is cool and their design is cool, but, like, they're bad to play. Um, Blight, Blight, despite the, what the community ended up doing by making him a sweat fest or sweat lord character, like, he is peak lore, peak visual design, like, amazing. So they can make original characters that are, like, the bomb. It's not impossible. So the fact that they just had two original character misses back to back is just, like, not even representative of, like, their, um, their quality of work anymore, right? Like, they've shown that they can put out really great stuff, and they just haven't in six months. Hey, Quayne, how's it going? How are you, friend? Game's getting old. Hope they're going to buy Dark Day. HMR. Majority of the mortality. Day. Yeah, they are releasing a new game as well. You're right. So they may be, like, distracted or, like, not as... Not putting as much into DVD. They both feel lazy and uninspired. Luckily, the next chapter will be during Dead by Daylight's anniversary, which they usually reveal something big and cool. It's usually a licensed chapter, so fingers crossed we get some sort of saving grace. I really hope it's not a third Resident Evil chapter. I know there's yeah. lots of Resident Evil fans who play the game, and I think Resident Evil's- Resident Evil is my favorite video game franchise. Nothing makes me happier or more at home playing video games than being in the middle of a Resident Evil game. When I was playing the RE4 make demo, um, that'll probably be out by the time this is out on the YouTube. <laughs> but like when I was playing the RE4 make demo uh, last Monday, I was so cozy. I was so happy. That That is my favorite video game franchise. I love it so much. I don't want a, a third Resident Evil chapter. I really don't. Like, what do you do? Mr. X? Mr. X could just be a skin. Like, he really could be. There's not enough different about him to really make him his own character. Um, and everybody else, like, there's not enough... There's not really any other, like, major antagonists that were actually interesting in the Resident Evil universe. Like, there's really not. It's really Wesker and Nemesis are kind of the big the big boys. Like, of course, my favorite, antag like, antagonist was, like, obviously, my favorite game is RE1 Make, uh, so I would like the, the Tyrant from that game, but, like... It's not even a character, it's just a monster. You can just put that as a skin for for Nemesis. You know, Albert's sister? No, Albert's sister's, once again, n nothing character. Nothing character. Nothing burger. Yeah, it's like, there's, there, there, there's no more, like, crazy, wild, awesome antagonists. You could do, like, you could do Resident Evil 7. You could do Jack Baker and make him a thing and do, like, bring in, like, Ethan, maybe? But, like, most, I like Resident Evil 7 and 8. A lot of the like the hardcore Resident Evil fan base and the general public as well, unfortunately, don't really like the new Resident Evils too much. They don't like seven and eight compared to the other ones. Compared to like the two make, three make, and now four make, um, they kind of like the more uh, classic formula. So yeah, I don't think that would sell. Ashley is a legendary skin. That'd be good. Yeah, that would be cool. I'd, I'd take that. Ethan does have a face though, boy. They have revealed his face. They have they have revealed his face now, so they can do that. Yeah, Ethan has a face, so they can do Ethan now. Yeah, they, they but like Ethan, like besides Lady D being L L Lady Dummy Tresk, uh, like besides her being hot, she doesn't have much of a character either. <laughs> like her, her lore is cool, but like she's there to be, you know, a thirst trap. That's what she's there for. So like, you know, like there's not enough left. I don't think there's enough left in the Resident Evil universe to like make a third chapter that would actually sell and do well and be interesting. Would I like to see Jack Baker? Yeah. I, I love I love that game. I love Resident Evil Seven. 
Do I want to see Ethan and Rose and maybe Mia as characters? Yeah, because I love those games, but like most people don't. So it's cool. But for the love of God, something new, please. I I don't want. I, I maybe it's just me. You know what? Me, but you know, just please something new. I don't want Resident Evil Chapter Three. But hey, you know what? Even if it is a third Resident Evil chapter, it'll still probably be better than the two dumpster fires we got. That's true. Reason number That's three, true. this game is dying and in a terrible place. It's a big shocker. It's the player base. So this is where things go off the rails. <laughs> this is not, not off the rails necessarily, but this is where the, the, the this is where the controversy is. Because uh, this is where a lot of people uh, started disagreeing and getting upset with them. was after this point. So, yeah. It's the community. I still, to this day, cannot believe the amount of whiny, fully grown, tantrum-throwing adult toddlers that mm -hmm. play this game. If yeah, the, the main demographic for DVD is, I think it's like 21 to 34. So most of the people that you're running into that are just like baby raging in after chat, or like BMing and being weird, or doing the creepy ass hump thing, like these are grown ass men, dude. It's disappointing. It's really disappointing. Like people that are like... They're adults that should, in all cases, know better. All cases know better. It's not people in the endgame chat blowing up at people, calling them names or slurs or threatening them, or people on their streams pulling up other Discord profiles and Twitch accounts, shaming them for their viewers or mm -hmm. threatening them in some way. It's people on Twitter. It's a it's people on Twitter just posting screenshots of endgame chats or pictures of, of them getting slugged on the ground and just wah wah boo hoo. I was okay. So Alrin, Alrin, I can very lovely and awesome streamer. I I love the homie. I wish he was here. Alrin, I can um very awesome, lovely streamer. Uh, their their whole thing is Wesker. They they like they they're Wesker main. They they're always trying to discover new Wesker techs. That's like their main thing. Um. Lucky to have known them for a really long time. I follow him on Twitter as well for that reason. And, like, all, all Rana kid, Alrin, hates, hates distortion. And every once in a while makes a post about, like, hey, yo, I hate distortion. And people just, like, absolutely tear Al apart. Like, absolutely, like, beyond the point of being con a constructive conversation, it's not just, I disagree with you. It's, I can't believe you think this. You're so stupid and I fucking hate you. Like, it's like, it's like visceral stuff. It's like visceral stuff. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Like it's literally like make it gets personal like immediately. It's it's it it is it is volatile. It is it is hard to watch that people care so much about somebody disliking distortion that they're willing to try to make them personally feel bad in real life because of the way they feel about an imaginary perk in a video game. They do not listen to learn, they listen to reply. Yep. People on Twitter do not listen to learn. They listen to reply. Yep. Yep. And the, and the intent is to hurt most of the time, unfortunately, is what it seems. Ooh, my life is over. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. God help me. Some of you really need to take a long, hard look in the mirror and get your shit together. Someone just sent me a clip of a TTV that told another TTV to kill themselves because the killer camped when all the gens were done. Yeah. That, that's actually the next video that I'm posting after this one, so. So, like, I, like, you're not allowed, to, you're allowed to not enjoy things, but you can't take it to that extent, right? You're allowed to be like, I find camping boring. I think this is frustrating. I mean, we record on Survivors. We got camped almost every single fucking game today. It was literally almost every single game. There was, it was more common to have a match where there was, it was more uncommon to have a match where there was no camping compared to actual camping. It was literally nine out of ten games today. Somebody was camping the hook, regardless of if somebody was around or not. It was just the strat today. It was just to sit by hook or proxy or like that was that was the game plan today. And I was I was upset all day. But you notice in after chat, I never ever went after them. I never even said anything even remotely derogatory or rude or or, or or anything. It's just a game, man. It's not worth that. Like you're gonna tell somebody to keep themselves safe because they stood near your hook in a video game, like. It's frustrating. I totally get it. It's frustrating and obnoxious, but you want them to you want them to not be on this planet anymore because they stood next to a hook in a video game? Like, come on. That is, that is a clear line. 
Be on the lookout. If your idea of fun revolves solely around how other people play, I I've got a news flash for you. You need to take your PC or your console and put it in the trash can because that's not how games work and that's not how the world works. Now here's the situation. Here, here's the deal. And this is this this is the opposite side of this. This is because this is a little bit of context. Some people are targeted on purpose. And that's the part of this that he missed. And this is the part of this that came out on Twitter that he argued against. Is that some people are targeted because they use pride charms. They are targeted because they use characters of color. That does happen. And he he said, you know, there's no way to prove it. But often there is, right? There's no way to prove it, but often there is. Uh, we had a match uh, Monday, wasn't it? We had that Jake that, you know, because I... Uh, it was the artist match. It was the artist match in RPD, I remember. Because um, he decided that he was going to take aggro in my face, right? He's going to take aggro in my face with his endurance, that he, his natural BT, his, his normal BT. He took aggro in my face, and I tunneled him for it. Because I was trying to get around him to go hit the other person that unhooked him, and he wouldn't get out of my way. I literally had no other choice. Like, I literally like could not get around him. He was body blocking me from his unhooker, because we were in a hallway. You know, RPD, it's upstairs. There's the hallways, like the narrow hallways. I could not get around him to hit the other guy, so I hit him and tunneled him out. And he was mad about it in the... You know what he went for? No, he went for right away. He's, he said, why do you have why do you have pride charms if you're not being inclusive? He went straight for the pride thing, like right away. Because I, I always wear the pride charms on my hooks. Like on my hooks when I play killer. And on my survivors. He went right for that right away. It's like, that's not very inclusive of you. You're using those pride charms. Because I... Because I tunneled you? Because you forced endurance? You're going to start going down that route. People, like... Yeah, people are definitely targeted for certain player choice. And that's zero, will, zero way to tell... Who a person is behind it. Yeah, but like... Like with that, like they do out themselves sometimes. There's plenty of times it's ambiguous, right? But there's plenty of times they do out themselves as well, Brand 2. There's plenty of times they do out themselves, like like with that guy. Like he, he started like going for the pride thing like right away, right? That is an aspect of this that, and this you're not seeing this here, right? Because this all happened on Twitter, where he's like, "Yo, well, you can't prove that's what's happening." Like this is this is not to this direct point, but the point that he made on Twitter is like, because somebody said that is like, "Well, what about targeted harassment?" This leaves out a, a chapter of this that's about targeted harassment, right? And his response was that was that you can't prove it. That was his response. And there's definitely times you can prove it. And even if you can't, that doesn't mean that component is not there. Like, it's like, we can't prove it. Well, sometimes you can't, but a lot of times you can't. And even if you can't prove it, a lot of the times it's in the back of your head. Like, is this why this is happening? And the, the reality is sometimes yes. Sometimes yes. It is happening because of that. And, like, you know, that Jake that we ran into is a little bit more brazen about it, right? But, like, you know, it's definitely a component. So, I, I like, while I, I agree, like, the initial response or the initial statement that he says, like, you know, you can't make fun entirely based on, like, someone else's response to you. You do have to take it. it, it you do have to take in the aspect as well as, like, sometimes, you know, party bullying and harassment does happen. Um... And it doesn't matter if you can't necessarily prove it every single time, right? I mean, he just talked about at the beginning of this if we're on a much less serious and a much less, like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> uh, existential way. Um, he, he gets targeted all the time in his streams by hackers, he said. Right? For something much less, you know, <laughs> real-life existential. Over, he, he gets targeted because he's a streamer all the time. He even said that himself. What, what, what would he say to, the, like, the, the response to that is, well, you can't base your fun off what they're doing. Like, you know. Are you saying that the game's been more miserable lately because of that? So. It's perfectly okay to not like certain play styles or certain killers or certain perks. Nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You can just go to the next game. Which is what go I did all day. the next f***ing match. I did that all day. If somebody was just camping me on hook, I was just like, okay, I'll just let go. <laughs> you know? 
if somebody was if it was a, a skull merchant doing three gen with like three sled, I was just like, okay. The next time I was hooked, I'm like, I'm, I'm just letting go. Goodbye. Just leave. That's what it's for. Yeah, like, but like that's like, like yeah, you're right that it's like it's it's truth in both things, right? Like, you know, it's it's truth that like. Yeah, you you shouldn't be responsible for like you shouldn't put the fun of the of the game in another person's hands. Like if if you're expecting every killer to walk in and play in a nice way and you're just upset every single time because like they didn't play the way you wanted, you're like this isn't the game for you. It's really not. Too much stuff can go in this wrong, wrong in this game for you to like rely on someone else for fun, right? But, you know, there's an aspect of that the people that do do that. That does actually happen. And regardless of the percentile behind it, that's still important. That's still important. That's still important. You don't have to. You don't have to just just dig into them and insult them and take screenshots and post it on Twitter and post little clips of. Look at this person. Person slugging me. I can't believe it. They must be banned. It's absolutely mind blowing. And you want to know the saddest part is that I believe that reason one and two can actually be fixed. Like, I think that Behavior can solve the hacking issue. They've already been working on it. I think that they can make their game more secure, and I hope that they will. And I also think that they can make better chapters. I think they can redeem themselves by releasing killers and survivors and maps that are really fun and new perks and stuff like that. I think those two things can be fixed. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Reason 3 can be fixed at this point. Every time I go on Twitter... Every time I check my emails and see what people have sent me and the experiences they've had with players in this game, it just it just reminds me that this shit is never going to change. And you know what? It's a shame because yeah, you live in a and you in him in specific. Like he lives in this bubble where he's kind of like a content cop, except for like DBD. So like he's constantly seeing the negativity, constantly seeing the negativity. I'm gonna release a video this week, uh, talking about like, um, positivity or just like you know. And taking a step back and kind of just like thinking of like you know positive things because like there are lifelong friends i've made just by streaming this game that i will covet and treasure forever great awesome people that i would never have met if i had never done this and just like other small things like that just small moments that are really wonderful that i can just good memories that i can just hold on to forever um and uh, not to say that everything's uniquely positive because it's definitely not but like you know he does live in a bubble where, like, his job is to, like, be constantly, like, reporting on and covering negativity in the game over and over and over, right? So it's kind of hard to, like, keep a, uh, like, a positive outlook when it's, like, your big content farm is toxicity in the game, right? Um, I'll make a video about toxicity every once in a while. I released one last week, um, which was React uh, up to, like... Uh, like, you know, why toxicity, toxicity even exists in Dead by Daylight, um, where it comes from and all that stuff. But, like, I don't revolve my content around the, the negative bad behavior that's out there in the community. But he does. So it's got to be, like, really hard and a very, very bleak outlook for him to be constantly, like, in that mode, all, constantly seeing that toxicity all the time um, to see things straight, you know? If the player base wasn't so elitist and standoffish and entitled i think that the player base would be much higher i think more people would stick around but people load in and they start playing a match as killer or even survivor and they just have people screaming at them taking their information and putting it on twitter taking their information and putting it on their on their stream to shame them for what they did how they played the game it is pure insanity and the fact that some of you can't realize the way that you're acting and how absolutely absurd it is I have no words. Anyways, I'm gonna stop ranting. Dark times in Dead by Daylight. Let's hope it gets better. I don't think that was nearly as like, I don't know, the way that that, that, that this went down on DVD Twitter, I would I would have, which I guess is this point. <laughs> I, mean, I would have assumed that he had said something like really off the wall. And besides a couple of missed comments that I just like don't agree with, and his responses to the video on Twitter, like, this isn't as offensive as people made it out to be. Like, I agree with, like, like 90% of what he said, right? It's more just, like, the way he reacted to certain things after the video came out. I was like, eh, I don't... I think you're missing the full picture on some of these things. But, yeah, that, that's stuff that, you know, can be, like, learned and adjusted, right? Like, you can get to that full picture as well. I, I, I didn't... I don't see the huge controversy behind this. 
yeah, I, I kind of don't get it. Like, obviously, he said the things he said on Twitter, which didn't occupy the full picture, but, you know. I, but besides that, it's like... I I don't know. <laughs> like I I don't I don't see it here. I I don't see the 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 reason that this has caused such an uproar. And I, maybe that you know, maybe that's the point, <laughs> right? Maybe that's the point. Is that like the uh, DVD Twitter did really make this um more than something it had to be, like way more something than it had to be. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's yeah. Like you you have to have an open mind with it. Like my I guess I just have a different perspective. Like if somebody tells me I'm hurt they're hurt i'm like why what's going on is it something i can help with like my question my i don't immediately go to like you know like well he, why are you even hurt that doesn't even make sense can you even prove that like that's just not where i go and that's just me that's just me as a person i just don't see things the the same way right i just don't see the things the same way and that's just that i don't know if that makes me a good person or a bad person or it makes him a good person or a bad person that's just that's just how i am that's just not where my brain goes I never go to the, to there immediately. Probably because he does basement blah, but yeah, that's another that's an aspect that I saw of this uh, on Twitter as well is that like he does he does a playstyle that's inherently frustrating, but is like ups like simultaneously upset that people are always frustrated in the DVD community, which is kind of you know <laughs> a, a little interesting. But I don't once again not at all worth any of like the personal insults or the kind of the dragging that I've seen of him like nearly at all. Win, like not nearly worth any of that at all. Yeah, the things that people have said about him that are just not true. Yeah, that is way outside, way out of pocket. Not even, not even remotely in the right field. Yeah, this isn't like completely overblown. I mean, completely overblown. And I think it it gets this way with like so many content creators. It's not just him. Like like. Like Lily Pie, who we've been kind of like subtly referencing all this, is like the other end of this conversation. She gets a lot of shit for like no reason. That is just way above and beyond anything she deserves for the takes that she has about the game. Like she is very much kind of more on the entitled survivor main side and sees things that way, and she gets way more than she deserves too. Just like he does. He gets way more shit than he deserves. So it's just like Why is it why is the fact that he bases most of his content on like basement camping make him worthy of being so detested like this just like how you know lily making most of her things about kind of having mostly a survivor take of being kind of entitled on that side make her a bad person like i don't i don't i don't get that at all like i like and there's a, like there's a yeah tad tad the the legion main that comes in here all the time people hate tat too that's always been kind and nice to me. I never, never, never an off thing. Whatever been in their chat, they've been in here, they've rated us. Like, always been kind to me. Always. People, people hate Tat for like no reason. And in some of the times, it comes down to just the fact that they main Legion. And the people find Legion boring. Like, I just don't get why it comes to that level of intensity. And I, and I dread the day that like, I'll be there too, right? I mean, recently, not recently, it was like four months ago, semi-recently, somebody made a video of like ranking the DB YouTubers, and I was like fairly low, and they talked about how awful my content was and stuff like that, and they were just like really personal about it for like no reason. It was really bad. It was really harsh. People get so like, people get so intense, so intense about this, the, their, this game and their takes about it, and the content creators, and I just don't get it. And I mean, we've talked about this before. I think some aspect of it comes from, like, um, some aspect of it comes from, like, you know, they, some people can't have a platform themselves, so they kind of like to do, a, like, a little bit of leeching, right? Like, maybe I can't be pop, like, that, remember that Coco video where, like, he accidentally, like, cucked that person's flashlight save? And then, like, he made, like, he went on to make, like, three videos about that person. That person is just some random player that's like like a pseudo celebrity on on DBD Twitter, and he he just kept feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding that ego of that player, who just baby raged at him, 
And that player is now like pseudo, like like I said, a pseudo DVD, like social media celebrity, just because they're the ones that like took a stand against Coconut RTS, right? They're that guy. They're that player from that 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 Coco game, where the flashlight got blocked and then they freaked out. They like they gained notoriety and fame and attention for that, despite like not having a platform themselves outside of just being a Twitter presence, right? I think I think a lot of that is what that plays into, is like I don't like because because like in regards to how you feel about his content, it's hard. It, I I make daily videos. It's hard. It's heckin' hard. It's really difficult to to put out videos all the time. It's very difficult. Like editing is no joke. Editing is rough. Editing is rough, buddy. So to come up with video ideas, get them out, do all that. Like it, it's it's rigorous. It's draining. So like, it's a whole lot easier to just be antagonistic to one of these people and get pseudo famous doing that than actually put in the hard work yourself. So it's rough to press start on OBS. How many how many times do you guys sit here like when we're in the starting screen screen? I just like completely zone out. <laughs> I've been in the starting screen screen for like seven ten minutes. It's just because like it's like I, I have to really like psych myself up some days because I'm just like. I'm just either out of it or something's on my mind. There's a lot of real life stuff happening. In the scenes all the time that like I never like I never let people in. I let them know what's actually happening. You know? You don't know what's going on in his life. He's got a family. He's got kids. At least one. I know of. Right? He's got a family. He's married. Got a got a uh, at least one kid. There's a lot of stress that comes with that. I don't know, man. Play is a good portion of non-toxic players we to see through all the day. But yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. Taserface was like, he li he his content is entirely based on covering t negative negativity and toxicity. So it's kind of hard to see. I I'd imagine it'd be hard for him to see things cleanly, um, with all that. Yeah, it's just, I feel like some people really like you know, content creation is hard or they don't have the means to, so they just decide to be incredibly antagonistic to people that have a following in order to, um, how to have that pseudo celebrity status without even having to put in like the effort, right? Um, because people like attention. Um, I feel like another part of it is just kind of like, I don't know, people's psychology, schoolyard bullying, right? You get to be in the cool kid group. You know, if, 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 if the general population of DBD decides that it's cringe to like spook and jukes, a lot of people will just dunk on spooks and jukes just because it's like, hey, that's the cool thing to do right now. I get to fit in if I just on spook and jukes. That's what I do, right? Yeah, if, it, if it's a cool thing to like, you know, make a Discord to, you know, hack and bother him. Clearly, you know, we're all cool if we also hate him, right? And uh, luckily, like, there are certain creators that have seemed to avoid this, like, like, Ots. Ots always seems to be in a good place. Um, not, but even then, there are people, there are people that just, like, the bond over their Ots hate, right? The, I mean, obviously, you saw recently with, like, the, the, the true talent Scott Chun thing. They're always at each other's throats. And it always, every three months, it feels like they rear their ugly heads again and go to war. <laughs> mostly, mostly on True's end of things. Um, but, like... If it's cool to hate true, people will hate true because it's cool. People, it's cool to hate Scott, they'll hate Scott because it's cool, right? That's just how it goes. So there's that aspect of it too. It's just kind of like a social, I want to fit in, so I'm just going to bash somebody so I can fit in, right? Now there's, like like I said, like, you know, there's plenty of people that I just dislike their content. I don't watch his content too much because I just, you know, despite a lot of it comes from a good place, there's a lot of, like, salt content in there. I just don't enjoy salt content. I don't like it. Um... Yeah, but yeah, Brand too. But like, there are people that have never ever watched True Talent that hate him, and I know that because I've asked them. I'm like, have you ever actually watched? And they'll hate him anyway, right? Never watched a single thing. Never been shown a clip. Never been shown a video. They're just like, oh well, people hate True Three, so I hate True Three now. I hate the True Talent, right? That's just how it goes. Because DBD is a very, whether you like it or not, the DBD community is a very, like, clicky kind of group, right? Whether that be uh, you're a killer main, a survivor main, either you're, you know, you're all about Otz's community, you're all about Scott's community, you're all about this guy's community, this girl's community, like. 
it's a very clicky kind of environment. So if the click decide, if a lot of clicks decide that Spooks and Jukes is out, he's cringe, then, you know, that's kind of the way it goes. That's not, now it's cool to hate you, so I'm going to hate you. I remember this. <laughs> and, and they may be lurking, so. I remember one time, I referred to you, I referred to earlier that Spooks and Jukes actually raided me once, and they were super kind to me. That was my first interaction with them. They raided me. They were nice to me. We, we chatted. Um, somebody DM'd me after the raid, like, don't you hate him? I was like, what? I do? Which is, what did I hate him? Oh, I thought you hated him. A lot of people hate him. And I was like, no? Am I supposed to? Am I, am I supposed to? <laughs> like, I was so confused. Because, like, immediately I got the raid and somebody was like, oh, uh, I hate him. D don't you? And it was like, what? Huh? <laughs> it's like, huh? What? Because it was like, apparently that was the status quo uh, from that person's perspective. Is like, like, you know, we hate this guy, and I was like, well, huh? I mean, they've been nice to me so far. <laughs> like, I was confused. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, that is unfortunately a big aspect of that. Dowsy, yeah, I see Dowsy get out a lot, and it's mostly just for takes about the game. It's not him necessarily being mean. It's just like he just has takes about the game, right? Uh, but yeah, um, that's kind of how I feel about it. I, at the end of the day, I think, I think this video was well-meaning. I think this video was well-meaning, and it's definitely exaggerated how much people are reacting to it, which, you know, kind of, in a weird way, proves this point, <laughs> right? If he's talking about Twitter overreacting and being a bad community, it, it kind of proves it. It kind of proves it, because, like, this video was not worth the level of vitriol that I saw on social media behind it, like, at all. It's not even that big of a deal. I think he's just, he was just frustrated and he let, a, he let off the handle about a lot of things that are making him upset about the game. Um, really, the only thing that really, you know, comes into disagreement from my end about things is like, you know, there was a disagreement on Twitter uh, about like, you know, what about targeting, what about targeting in DBD? And his response was not on point, in my opinion. Um, but we already discussed that. So that's kind of like the only hang up I have. Like, otherwise, this, this is incredibly tame and. I just don't get it, right? I just I don't get the I don't get the hella blue about it. But like I said, maybe that proves his point that DBD community just loves fighting and being at odds with each other. They love conflict and they flock to it because I don't find anything particularly aggressively offensive about what I watched today. So yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs>